Aaron and I met up in Spokane, Washington. Uh, we were going to college at Gonzaga University. We had lots of mutual friends and uh, some classes together. And we were, we were starting to get to know each other a little bit. And she went to Spain. She went to Granada um, to study abroad. And when she came back, well, we really started to get to know each other a little bit better. We started studying for some classes together for some tests in the library. And um, I remember one, uh, I guess it was an evening pretty clearly, and we were, we were, had made a plan to meet and study. And I really knew she liked uh, this particular coffee drink. And so I went into the, the coffee shop there on campus and I was, uh, stood in line and ordered her a drink. It was a chai tea latte and she walked up behind me and didn't realize I was there and right as she got to the register I said, oh I think this is what you're looking for and it was uh, exactly what, what she had ordered and um, and then you know so after that we started to, to kind of develop our chemistry a little bit and um, got to know each other a little better. Uh, Drew and I met at Gonzaga University I think we met maybe nine years ago, nine or ten years ago now, um, when I was a sophomore and he was a, uh, a freshman and he was friends with some, a group of guys who was friends with my group of girls. And um, I first noticed him when he, in class, we shared a lot of the same classes because he, he and I had the same major for a while. And I noticed that he, he was so articulate and so intelligent and he was always, um, you know, coming back winning debate tournaments and my teacher was congratulating him on that. But he always was very stoic and humble about it and I was really thought that that was very impressive in a subtle way. And I always, I was attracted to his hair, even though it was very short when I met him, I could see what was going on there. And I was especially attracted to what was underneath his hair, his beautiful brain. And he had a certain softness, kindness, but a stoic intelligence about him that I was really attracted to. Also, he um, was really thoughtful. He would bring uh, books over for my roommate that he thought that she would enjoy and other friends of mine based on what he thought they were going through at the time. And I just thought that was very touching that a man would be so thoughtful of a friend. And that's all I was looking for. And that's what I have. Oh, Aaron, Aaron's great. I mean, anybody who talks to her knows right off the bat she's just she's a real spark plug. Um, you know, she's funny, she's intelligent, um, she she's a really good rapper, um, and she loves words and the meanings of words and the history behind words and speaking languages and communicating with people. And uh, I think she's a really open person. I think that's what really uh, brought me to her. And, and she has this real uncanny ability to, to make you smile. Um, she's, she's so uh, quick and witty, and I, I just love that. She's got great chemistry, and uh, just could go on and on with her just uh, bantering about, and I just I love that. Yeah, of course, and uh, Erin's amazing athleticism. Uh, I always really appreciated her, her agility, both of her mind and of her body. She's really quick, and uh, really fast, she's lightning fast sometimes. And she's also uh, impervious to danger, it seems. She's, uh, she's always able to leap out of the way of any kind of moving object. And I always found that really uh, a very unique quality about Aaron that I like. I, get, um, I was attracted initially to Drew by his thoughtfulness and his, his really high intelligence. Um, like I said, we had some of the similar classes together and I was always in awe of this guy when he, he was speaking about, you know, different wars, different theories. And I thought he was just really intelligent and deep. And every time I talked to him, he seems very sensitive and thoughtful and pensive. And I thought, this is a really sweet, smart, humble man. And that's what attracted me to him initially, to that. And also, I was really attracted to his uh, romantic side He's very poetic and he would always, maybe if he went to class, he would stop by my house and leave a little poem or thinking about me. And I just really appreciated his thoughtfulness. That, that really initially attracted me to him and keeps me in love with him today. I proposed to Aaron in San Francisco. Um, we had been shopping for a ring for a while and kind of talking about 
getting married and um, we went to the Alameda Antique Show, which happens once a month over there in the shipyards. And we had been walking around shopping for some things and we went to a little antique jeweler. Erin's a big fan of Art Deco and I kind of had an idea that she wanted an engagement ring that was from that period. And she was, she was picking through there and the, the lady running the stand really took an interest and she was helping her. She was showing her all types of different rings and they finally found one that she really liked. Um, and she said, well, that's the kind of the style that I'd like, but maybe not this one. We'll, we'll just, we'll, we'll keep looking. And so we kept shopping and I doubled back a little bit later and you know, said to the lady, you remember me? I, I'm here to get that ring. And she, she knew right where it was. And um, so I got the ring and we drove back uh, that afternoon to San Francisco and went to lunch with her dad. And uh, during lunch, I showed him the ring and, and he looked at it and he said, oh, that's, that's really, it's a really pretty little ring. And, and I took it back. And I don't think he realized that it was, uh, I was you know, gonna ask Aaron to marry me. And so a little bit later, I took it out again and said, said, you know, Barry, this is an engagement ring. We wanna get married. And he gave me a big smile and he said, he said, well, if that's what you both want, I'm really happy for you. Um, and so later that afternoon, we headed home and I thought, well, now that I've asked her dad, I, I better ask her, you know, pretty quick. I don't want to lose my nerve. And so we took a drive and I had a, a whole plan. We went up to um, McKinley Park and we were going to walk out and take a nice view of the city. And I, I thought I'd ask her then. And of course, when we got to the top of the hill, it was a little windy and Aaron, um, you know, at times has a, a mind of her own and um, she, she wouldn't get out of the van. She was, uh, she was sitting in the passenger seat and I said, Aaron, let's get out and go for a walk. And I asked her a couple times and she wasn't going. And, um, you know, she finally said, no, it's too cold. You know, let's just sit here. And so she, she kind of came over and she sat on my knee. And so to shut him up, I sat on his lap and he kind of went like this and looked around. We were, we were talking and this ring is just burning a hole in my pocket. And, um, so I took it out and, you know, held it up. I said, Aaron, you know, would you marry me? And she immediately starts crying. She says, I'm not one of those silly girls who cries. And she's crying, she's crying. And finally I said, well, you, you know, you have to answer. <laughs> and she, of course, she said, yes, of, of course, course, of course. And then we went home and told our, you know, started making phone calls, telling friends and family. And um, it was a really happy day. Uh, the day Drew proposed, I think he, he didn't know he was going to propose that day. Of course, but we had already talked about being together the rest of our lives, and we knew that involved getting married. And we thought we would wait till there was a kind of a downtime in our lives where we needed something exciting to celebrate. But um, the day we, he proposed to me, we, my father picked us up and we went to the Alameda flea market, the first and only time we'd been there. And while we were there, we found a, I found a little vendor. She was selling antique rings and I went instantly up to one ring out of maybe 600 old antique rings. I said, if you ever want to find a ring for me, engagement ring, just something beautiful and simple and old like this would be great. And little did I know he crept back and bought the ring that day. And we went to lunch back in San Francisco with my father. Well, I went to the bathroom, apparently they talked about it, and he snuck it in, and he said, Barry, should I, uh, I want to ask Aaron to marry me. He showed her the, him the ring first, and he said, Barry, uh, you think I should ask Aaron to marry me? He goes, well, don't ask for my advice. I got married at the advice of a lawyer. So that was about the extent of their conversation, and uh, I had come back from the bathroom, no idea this had happened. Saw a few roommates of mine in the street, Anyway, we headed back to our house. Seemed like a normal but fun, you know, a day. There were people touring our house because they were selling it. So we decided to go up to the park. And of course we drove because it was uphill. You know, we don't want to really walk uphill. And uh, we got to the park and it was late afternoon. And the sun was coming in the van and our little Volkswagen van and it felt so nice. And Drew said, let's go for a walk in the park. And I thought, God, it's cold out there. So we stayed in the van, even though he kept saying, come on, please, let's go walk in the park. So to shut him up, I sat on his lap and he kind of went like this and looked around and he goes, well, I love this van. And he pulled up the ring. Will you marry me? And I saw the little ring that I had picked out and I just started crying. And, you know, I was like, 
I can't, I was crying about crying because I couldn't believe I was crying because I always make fun of those people crying on TV anyway. So now I'm crying and he's like, well, will you? And I said, of course, of course, of course. And we went back and told our roommates who were pretty shocked, but very happy and friends came over. We had some champagne. It was a great day and it's been getting better every day since. I guess my my greatest wish for Aaron and I, or where I see us in 50 years, is traveling the world somewhere, somehow. Um, you know, whether it's, it's you know on a boat or on a train or um, an airplane. Um, you know, and just seeing more of the world. We've been really lucky and fortunate that we've been able to see um, you know some of it already, and we both really enjoy that and love doing that together. And you know, as long as we're happy and healthy, um, you know, everything else is a bonus. But uh, you know, I would really love for us to be able to do that um, and, and go and see new things and you know really enjoy all that the world has to offer together. If looking back at our when we are at our 50th wedding anniversary I'd like to look back and see a life that was full of respect and love and inspiration compassion for each other and I'd like to have brought and raised some beautiful people who are full of love and compassion and understanding for the world. And career-wise, I hope that Drew and I will have found that thing that brings joy to other people in the world that, um, that continues on after we stop working there, uh, like some sort of educational empire. And also, uh, I hope that our 50th wedding anniversary will bring us to San Francisco on our boat after we retire and we sail the whole world, stop in to have a beautiful party with our beautiful friends and family who've always loved and supported us. And um, I hope that we're still the best of friends and even better friends, if that's possible. <laughs>
of being good people and and living a good life, a good healthy life and, and lifestyle and uh, try and promote, try and save our planet the, must, the best they can at this point. A lot of the messes weren't theirs, but they're going to have to clean it up. And to pass on the love that, that we try to pass on to them, to the next generation, to just be good people and caring people and help people, others in, in need, when you, particularly your friends, and uh, just to pass on the same messages that we passed on to them to the next generation. That would be my message to their children. And, and it's on the love that, that we try to pass on to them, to the next generation, to just be good people and caring people and help people, others in, in need, when you, particularly your friends, and uh, just to pass on the same messages that we passed on to them, to the next generation. That would be my message to their children. And, and